His Holiness Karakin I became a towering figure in the Armenian Church and in our culture. He was one of the most important architects of ecumenical relations in modern times. He served faithfully as the vice moderator of the central and executive committees of the World Council of Churches. During the last 28 years, His Holiness Karakin I traveled the world became the supreme patriarch and catholic host of all Armenians. He was also the head of the widely scattered Armenian church. He brought with him more expectations, more hopes, and more faith in his capacity to serve his Said of His Holiness Catholicos Mergerdis Mikarimian may be said of His Holiness Karakin I as well. Every Armenian has two fathers, the natural one and Karimian Hayri. <laughs> hundred years from now, Armenians will look back and say, he was a true Hyrig. He was the man who knew the world around him. He swam in it and lived in it. He answered every question he was asked for. He was also the first Catholicos in our history who knew how to drive a car. What would be an area that you would like to see yourself remembered in history? What would be an area that you would feel that you would like to see yourself remembered?
To understand this Catholicos, we must understand where he came from. His Holiness Karakin I, the 131st Supreme Patriarch and Catholicos of all Armenians, baptized as Nishan Sarkisian, was born on August 27, 1932, in Kesab, Syria, an Armenian village situated near the, the defeat Mediterranean of Turkey in the First World War. The Saleh. French occupied Galicia in for a brief period. In 1938, with the, the period, of six, with the sudden departure of the French in January, in with the sudden departure of the French, the sudden departure of the French in January 1922, <laughs> All boys of his age in Kesab admired his discipline, which was implanted in Nishan by his father, Hagop Sarkisian. Nishan was a very devoted child to his parents. His mother taught him to excel in his schoolwork, and she, along with his grandmother, instilled Christian faith in him from early childhood. When Nishan was growing up with his curly black hair, blue eyes, and sculpted chin of determination, Kesab was an idyllic setting for a boy to spend his youth. The hike from their house over to the Mediterranean seashore was less than 20 minutes at a brisk pace. From the high mountains of Kesab, one could see the very top of Musaler, almost touching the sky and towering over the rest of the granite hills. From the top of the Selderan mountain, a young boy could think high thoughts, experiment with daring ideas, and create his own vision of the future. When Nishan wasn't hiking mountain trails or riding a donkey heading towards the beach, he would plunge into reading all kinds of books in Kesab's only library, which was, and still is, physically and culturally, the focal point of the village. During his scholastic years at the Usum Natsirats United Armenian School of Kesab, Nishan would deliver his homework with great style, again and again always maintaining the number one stature in class. During an evening in May 1946, when he was only 13 years old, he was with three schoolmates studying for finals. Late that evening, they became extremely hungry, but there was nothing to eat in the entire house. Just a block away, Bonfeli Sadakian had a chicken coop. I must make, first of all, a confession. <laughs> we in the village where I was born were very close to the Armenian Evangelical Church. Our school, the Miatsyak school, was part and parcel of the compound in which there was the Armenian Evangelical Church. And the Badvedi of the time used to have quite a nice house compared to the other villages. And one evening, at late night, we were preparing for the final exams of the school year. I was with my classmates in my classmates' home. Borikya, Borikya Hoja, some of you perhaps may have heard of him. He was the great teacher in our Armenian community school. Hoja and his wife had gone to visit their neighbor, and we were three of us. Only Borikya, myself, and someone, Nesro, from Kaladuram. We were very, very hungry late night, what we could do. There was the Badgeris Havnos, 
1949, Nishan was ordained deacon, and in 1952, he graduated from the Theological Seminary with high honors. On September 28, 1952, he was ordained a celibate priest, renamed Karakin in memory of late Catholicos Karakin I Hafsepjans, and joined the religious order of the Armenian Catholicate of Cilicia. Upon presentation of his doctoral thesis, The Theology of the Armenian Church According to Liturgical Hymn, Sharagans, he was given the ecclesiastical degree of Bardapet in 1955. Bardapet Karakin then assumed the duties of supervisor and member of the faculty of the Theological Seminary in 1956. At this time, he also participated in the Middle East Youth Conference in Beirut, which marked the beginning of his active ecumenical ministry. In 1957, Fardapet Karakin was admitted at Oxford University in Great Britain. He was a young Armenian seminary graduate with a piercing look, sharp intellect, quick wit, and sense of humor. During the two years I spent in England as a student, I learned many things, but I have forgot also many things. I remember the story of Bernard Shaw when he went once to no, no, uh, Bertrand Russell, the great philosopher of this century, British, and uh, he had been hurt. No, no, he had hurt Bernard Shaw, and he went to apologize, and Bernard Shaw was not at home. And uh, he wanted to give him a lesson, and he wanted to tell him, you are a pig. <laughs> he, when he was not at home, he just carved on the door the three pigs. <laughs> and when Bernard Shaw came, wrote to him a nice postcard. My dearest friend, I sincerely apologize that I was not at home when you came, but I found you carved. <laughs> Come visit. Come on the door. <laughs> Bardapet Karakin wrote his thesis in 1959 on the Council of Chalcedon and the Armenian Church, which was published in London in 1965 and reprinted in New York in 1976. Elected to the Episcopate in 1964, he served as Bishop of Tehran from 1964 to 1971 and New Jolfa, Isfahan, from 1971 to 1973. One day. 
day when I was the prelate in Iran, in South Iran, in the city of Isfahan, I had as my guest one of your sons, William Saroyan. He stayed two days with me at the premises. When I took him to the Hotel Shah Abbas, which was the greatest and the most beautiful hotel in Iran, Suddenly, at the registry, while checking in, an Iranian boy, in great surprise, approached him, Sroyan, you are here? I was looking for you all America. I have played in one of your plays, but I have never seen you. You in Iran, in my country? Stop, he said. Don't say Sroyan. Say, <laughs> I said, this is In 1973, he was appointed Archbishop and Primate of the Eastern Prelacy of the Catholicate of Cilicia, with its headquarters in New York. Upon his return to Beirut on May 29, 1977, he was elected as Catholicos coadjutor to ailing Catholicos Horen I. At the death of Catholicos Horen I in 1983, he succeeded as Karakin II, at which point he was fully installed as of the Great House of these years coincided with the Civil War in Lebanon, and Catholicos Karakim II, through a policy of positive neutrality, worked hard to prevent the Armenian community from being dragged into the widespread chaos. The beginning of Lebanon's Civil War. The beginning of Lebanon's Civil War. Catholicos Karakin II was a model man with immense command of multiple languages. He read a great deal of literature and the history of many cultures. He shared ideas with presidents and religious leaders. With all of these attributes, he became the president of the Middle East Council of Churches, instituting close links with Rome. Catholicos Karakin's first visit to Pope John Paul II was in April 1983. He's a king. To He's commemorate the, the 70th chief priest of the Christian the Church. There is something that happens when we see this Pope. Turks. I'm seeing Holiness, Peter. Karakin II. John Paul II came to the papacy at the age of 58. He said, united with Christ, those martyrs will rise again. Life will be stronger than death. During his tenure in Cilicia, Catholicos Karakin paid frequent visits to the See of Holy Echmiadzin in Armenia. In the aftermath of the earthquake of December 7, 1988, he visited the stricken area and expressed solidarity with His Holiness Vaskin I of blessed memory, the late Catholicos of all Armenians. I believe Catholicos Karakin felt the collective experience and sufferings of the Armenian nation in his bones. May Catholicos Karakin II visited the United States of America and Canada. We had a faith. Unity, commitment, we were Armenian. harmony, but we didn't have the physical were the major internationally recognized. We have now to think as not pieces of nation, communities scattered here and there. I belong to the state of Armenia, belonging to the state of Lebanon, as you belong to the American nation, and at the same time you belong inwardly to that motherland which has been alive in you to the church, to the language, to the heroic history and all the legacy we have inherited. Otherwise, where is our argument? It's here that finds its great meaning what this holiness, the Catholicos are all Armenians, Baskin 
University and I myself, together with our assistants, that is to say, with our councils, clerical and lay councils, we decided to walk hand in hand as one church and as one nation, and we are doing it, we are continuing it, and we are committed to continuing it. Together, in the spirit of unity, in the spirit of belonging to the one and the same Armenian church. That is what I find to be the most enriching spiritual life. When we can feel ourselves belonging to that church which has maintained firm our life all along the centuries when life often has been denied to us because of the circumstances of our history. When His Holiness Vasken the first died in 1994. The government of the newly independent Republic of Armenia strongly supported the final of our Following his election, This was Prayot Han Rabitian, Mahat Kaka, talks intended to be a Balkanio, Luka, Shnorhavore, Norundir Katogosa, Kanio, Luka, Shnorhavore, Norundir Katogosa, Aminai Payot, Mile Patro, Yes, I saw Buchinch Kernamasel. But Madame, I'm Shanadutian Masin, Gurunhamar Inc., the Marshal Nahaka of the Hydebetsa. Armenian and Catholic churches ended a 1500 year rift. A common declaration was signed by Pope John Paul II and Catholicos Karakim I. This particular decision by Catholicos Karakim I was made without discussion with any bishops, most of whom protested. This was a major step towards uniting the Catholic and the Eastern churches. The declaration, signed at the end of Catholicos Karakim's official visit to the Vatican, said past disputes were due to the linguistic, cultural, and political factors. In the joint declaration of His Holiness Pope John Paul II and His Holiness Catholicos Karakim I, reads, His divinity is united to His humanity in the person of the only begotten Son of God. Will be stronger Karakim I than death. Made a significant contribution to the progress this is of the, the Pope. satisfaction of the Armenian the Church. Seminary at it is the center for the theological training of young priests the Christian and a depository of ancient was religious artifacts. And new the mood here is one of tranquility in Armenia and self-assurance. Well Armenia is left with represents only about one-eighth of its former size. Were put in the Father told me that Armenians are patient, to yet one day the we will see our people reunited. Of the role of the Church throughout these times has been to support and teach its people. Support and teach its people. And it is the heart of our nation, in the pulse of the nation's spirit. Was fortunate to accompany him. And today and is Pope Emmanuel. Two, three days ahead of time, right? Yeah, Friday, Thursday, Friday, 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 Friday,
on this here today speaking about St. James. One of our Catholic forces visited the Byzantine Empire in Constantinople. And the two of them sat together in the palace hall. And when the audience ended, the Catholicos began to walk out together with the Empire. And one of his of the members of his entourage, the priest, the secretary of the Catholicos, went and took the chair on which the Catholicos was sitting and walked after the Catholicos, the chair. And the palace guard rushed at him and said, What are you doing? But according to the tradition of the religion, the Catholicos, when he sits on the chair, nobody else has the right to sit on that chair. It belongs to him. <laughs> As the historian adds, the reason was that the chair was gold. <laughs> Here I think the goal is the heart is the human the, uh, relationship that I find in the city. First of all, we would like to, uh, the city of Fresno, uh, would like to uh, welcome you to our city hall uh, formally, uh, but uh, we almost feel as... Uh,